Okay, the next question asks us to find the distance that the particle traveled over the interval uh, 0 to 10 seconds. And this is also a little confusing and maybe misleading. Um, some students might think to find the position of the particle at 0 seconds, the beginning of the interval, and find the position of the particle at 10 seconds, the, the end of the interval, and just say, okay, well, this is where it started and this is where it ended, so that's the distance. But what makes it confusing is the fact that because the particle changed direction within that interval of time, it went forward, it then went backward, and then it went forward again. So it kind of zigzagged. So it's, it's more complicated than just looking at where it started and where it ended. You also have to account for where it stopped and if it changed direction. So I've got the answer to the problem that we did right above it. I made it a little smaller here. We can see where did the particle stop and change direction? So we see that um, the interval from 0 to 10 seconds is what we're looking at for this next question. So we're, we're kind of focusing on this portion of the number line right here. And we see that it goes forward and then it goes backwards. So, you know, in essence, if it goes forward and then it goes backwards, it might end up where it started. But it did travel in one direction and then it traveled in the other direction. So what we're going to do to answer this question is we're going to find the position at each of these key points. We're going to see where it was in the beginning. We're going to see where it was at 5 seconds. And we're going to see where it was at 10 seconds. Okay, so I've got the position function entered into my calculator from before. It's under y sub 1. And I'm going to enter these sort of critical numbers in. I got 0, I got 5, and I got 10. And at zero seconds, the, po the position of the particle is 10. At five seconds, the position of the particle is 635. And at 10 seconds, the position of the particle is 510. So between zero and five seconds, the particle was moving in the same direction. So there's a, there's a beginning point, it marched to the right, and then it ended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the, dis the difference of these two numbers here. And should the distance be negative, I would just take the absolute value because distance always has to be positive. So this is easy, I could just do this in my head. It's gonna be 625. Okay, now when we go from five to 10 seconds, it's moving in completely the, the other direction. But that doesn't matter, it's still covering distance. So I'm gonna subtract these and also take the absolute value because distance has to be positive. So I'm gonna say 635 minus 510, and I'm gonna get 125 there. So the total distance traveled would be adding these two numbers up. So that answer of 125 plus 625 ends up being uh, 750. So the total distance is equal to 750. Very quickly, if you didn't consider the fact that the particle stopped at five seconds and changed direction, you might be inclined to say, well, the particle started here at 10 and it ended here at 510. So that means the distance traveled is 500. And that's just not right. It went this far to the right and it went this far to the left and you add those up and you get a total of 750. So the last question that we're going to look at with this same problem is to find the intervals of time when the particle is speeding up. Now the question could have just as easily asked when is the particle slowing down but we're just doing speeding up. So I'm just going to underline that phrase speeding up because that's what we're going to be focusing on here. Now the particle speeds up when both the position, I'm sorry, when both the velocity and the acceleration have the same signs. So they could both be positive or they could both be negative. But the velocity and acceleration have to have the same sign. So let's just make a little note of that. The velocity function and the acceleration function, they have to have the same signs.
Now, if the signs were different, that would mean absolutely the opposite. It would mean that they were slowing down. So that's how you answer that question, if, if that had been the question. So we already know the signs of the velocity function, and that's from this other question over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our acceleration function, which is 12t minus 90, and we're going to set that equal to 0. So I want to know when the signs are going to be positive and when the signs are going to be negative. So I'm going to divide uh, everything through by 6, and that gets me 2t minus 15 is equal to 0. That wasn't essential to do that, but I just kind of, I don't know, I just kind of got the, the yearning to do that. So 2t is equal to 15, and t is equal to 7.5. Okay. Now, I read in a book this, this way to make a chart which really organizes it quite nicely, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a chart. One column heading is going to be V of t. Another column heading is going to be A of t. Like that. Oh, that's a great line right there. Oh, another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these critical numbers, 0, 5, and 10, and I'm also going to infuse 7.5. I'll show you what I mean by that. So our first uh, interval is going to be from 0 to 5. So this is not an ordered pair. This is an interval of time. Now my next critical number is 7.5. So I'm going to get that in the mix. So that would be from 5 to 7.5. And now the next interval is going to be from 7.5 to 10. And finally, we end with 10, and we go on forever. Okay? And a lot of this stems from this condition right here. The reason we're starting at 0 is because of what I'm circling right now. That's why we started at 0. 10 was our last critical number, but then it just keeps going, so that's why I put to infinity. So let's make this a nice little table here. Um, maybe make some lines to make the chart look good. Let's see what's going on. Organization is very critical. Okay, great. So we're done with that. Now, the velocity, we already have those signs allocated. So from 0 to 5, we know that it's positive. Maybe I'll use red, like up there. So from 0 to 5, it's positive. And we know that from 5 to 10, it's negative. So from 5 to 10 is negative. So this includes that. That's going to be negative. And that also includes that. That's also going to be negative. And that we know that beyond 10, it's going to be positive. Now, that just leaves us with the acceleration. What we could do is we could do a very similar thing that we had done over here with the velocity. But we could do it with the acceleration. So I could say A of t. I can make a little number line like this. Here's 0 and here's 7.5. And you could just pick a variety of things and use it on your calculator, test it on your calculator. So you could try, let's say, A of 3, and let's try A of 9. Okay, so I've got the acceleration function stored under y sub 3, so let me just get the calculator ready in A of 3, A of 9. Okay, so when I do A of 3, I get a negative number, and when I do plug in A of 9, I get a positive number. So the acceleration is going to be negative from 0 up to 7.5. So this is negative, and that's negative. Once I get beyond 7.5, it's positive. And now this chart just really enables me to answer the question very easily. When is the particle speeding up? Now we said that in the very beginning that a particle will speed up if the velocity and acceleration have the same signs. Well, in this first interval, the signs are different, so that's not going to work. But the signs are the same here, and they're also the same here. So that's when the particle is speeding up. So you could use the interval notation, or you should also probably be prepared to use just regular um, inequality notation. So the signs are the same between 5 and 7.5, and also greater than 10. Okay, 
So had the, had the question been asked, when is the particle slowing down, you would have picked this interval here because the signs are different and this interval here because the signs are different.